What do we have here? A platformer. Resolution is quite low, but honestly the animation is pretty good. The main character doesn't have limbs, he's some sort of disjointed creature whose body squashes together when he jumps into stuff, and he has the ability to summon a giant fist out of nowhere. That's Rayman. Rayman just one iteration before he was first seen publicly. Rayman on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, to be specific. This was never released as a game, and for a long time was thought lost. But the source code was rediscovered in 2016 by the original creator, Michel Ancel, later released on Dropbox by Omar Konyu, with Ancel's blessing. Going back further, before even this version existed, Rayman only had form in Ancel's head and drawings, and an unreleased project he made to practice animation. As a teenager, he had immersed himself in art, music and coding, knowing even then that game design was his heart's calling. Rayman's original sketch, along with many others, was just him honing his skills for this future career. He had no idea what the little drawing was destined to be. He started making games before his 18th year, first being noticed by making a demo for the company Lancor, and soon after working on the visuals of Nicholas Chacroon's games. Once finished with that, it was time to make his own, Brain Blaster, also known as The Teller. In the meantime, somewhere else in France, the Guillemot brothers were continuing their parents' business working with farmers, but were finding less and less success with it over time. They decided to move into selling computers and related items, including games. After one of them, Claude discovered just how much more they were paying for games in France compared to the UK, they started a mail order company to sell the games at a cheaper rate than any of their competition and found success. Spurred on by the achievement, they wanted to go further, to stop buying games and start making them. They created Ubisoft proper in 1986, the name Ubisoft apparently being derived from the initials of their girlfriends at the time. During this period, the damage to the ozone layer was a highly talked about issue, and Ansel had an idea to spread awareness by making a quick animation about chlorofluorocarbons fucking up ozone molecules. Almost like a school bully thing, if I understand this correctly. He sent this to a contest Ubisoft was running, and it didn't take long following that for them to want him on their team. He joined them for a bit, but when Ubisoft moved to Paris, Ansel broke with them, not wishing to make that move at the time. He then started working on Rayman animations with Frederick Hood. They managed to achieve motion much smoother than anything on the market at the time. They went back to Ubisoft with this, and the Guillemots loved it. And from there, as they say, the rest is history. Except it wasn't. That's a silly phrase. There were definitely a lot of uncertainties and complications yet to be tackled, but that was enough as a starting point. It would grow to a franchise which was Ubisoft's poster boy for a little while, and produced an almost absurdly popular spin-off party game. Not the only spin-off though. A number of educational games were also created. One of them was Frank with Rayman, which is where I first joined the story at age 5. It was actually the first game I ever seriously got into. I mean, it completely failed to teach me French, but it was fun for my inexperienced childhood mind at least. But Rayman's progress has been characterized by sudden starts and stops. After Rayman 3, we didn't see another game in the series for 8 years. We got two more at that time and then it vanished again, at least as a mainline platformer. This is a little odd considering every single one of them has been well received and Ubisoft has never really made a replacement to fill its niche. That question is not really the point of the following videos. I'll touch on it, but I'm going to be going over them as games. Partly because I really like them, definitely my favourite platformer series, but also because I think there's something unique to be said for each of them. Putting my bias out front early, I think Rayman 2 is my favourite but every one of them does many things right, and every one of them makes mistakes. I don't think there's a fair answer to which one is best, it's about what elements you value most, and that sounds like a fun thing to explore for a little bit. Hopefully you agree with me on that. The videos should be added to a playlist on this channel, and the first one will be up at the same time as this video. I'll see you there.